then we'll move on to the expression browser. So one of the main one of the first questions you might have when you start working on a gene is what's it doing? And one way to kind of start addressing this is where and when is my gene expressed? And in Arabidopsis, there's some very nice resources, so things like the EFP browser, where you can search for your favourite gene and see where it's expressed across all the different tissues and ages of the plant. But in wheat, we didn't have any resource like this at all um, until about nine months ago when um, we developed a gene expression browser for wheat, which is www.wheat-expression.com. And to be able to build this um, uh, gene expression atlas, we developed a new platform which allows you to analyze RNA-seq data in a simple way. Um, you take reads, so RNA-seq reads as an input. You also need to have a reference transcriptome to add, and you need metadata. So by this, I mean information about what the RNA-seq sample is. So what tissue does it come from? Is it from the leaf? Is it from the root? How old was the plant? Or what variety of plant of wheat was it? Um, so you can add all this these three types of information in together, and the platform XVIP, an expression visualization and integration platform, takes this information, it aligns the reads to the transcriptome, makes a database which produces a visualization interface that you can easily filter and sort and look at your data, um, and you can also export all the data for downstream analysis, so for example differential expression analysis using R packages like Edge R and DSeq2. Um, and just to say that we use a, a very fast reader liner called Callisto, um, which means it's not very computationally intense, which means you can run this platform on your desktop PC. So for the Wheat Expression Browser, um, we used 16 different RNA-seq studies, which were all publicly available. This included over 400 RNA-seq samples, and in total about 11 billion reads. And we calculated that the sequencing alone cost over £150,000. So hopefully this will prove a useful resource, and it's a good way to kind of reuse data that's already available. So just to say that this is the interface that's available at wheatexpression.com. And if you look on the... Oop, is that going to appear? Okay, if you look on the left-hand side of the screen, the mouse doesn't seem to be working, then um, you can see that you have different categories. So we've got high-level tissue and then tissue, high-level age and age, stress and disease, variety, and these are all different categories of metadata that we've added to each sample. So some samples were from the spike, some were from the leaves, some were from the root, and you can adjust these different categories depending on your needs. And um, if we just start looking for our favourite gene of interest, then when you search for the gene, then you can see um, different information. So in this case, we can see the different tissues where the gene is expressed. Is that playing? And you can add more information about which tissues it's expressed in. So now, instead of just having one category of spike, we now have the different components of the spike split up into five different green bars. Um, and <clears throat> we can also look at different information, so we can take away categories we're not interested in. So in this case, expression in the grain was quite low, so I've removed that tissue completely, and then we can resort just according to the tissues which remain. Um, and this is also true for the other categories. We can hover over particular bars to look at the expression level. So in this case, this is expressed at 11 TPM. This is transcripts per million, which is normalized across different studies. We can add in extra categories, so in this case we've just added in the age of the plants, and you can resort according to the new category, and the bars will be recolored according to this new category to allow easy comparisons. And because wheat is a polyploid, we've added an option to add in expression of homologs. So now, instead of just seeing the original gene that we had, we now have the expression of the A, B, and D homologs all together. And in this case, you can see that all three homologs are expressed in quite a similar pattern. But in some cases, the homologs are actually expressed quite differently. So it's interesting to be able to check these things. Um, and the other thing to say is this expression browser currently only accepts the CSS gene names. This is the first gene name that was available. Um, and that's why it's important to be able to convert from the TGAC gene models into the CSS gene models. And we are planning to update this expression browser to the new TGAC gene models. That's a work in progress, and we hope it will be available in the next month or so. And then you'll be able to search with either a TGAC gene model or a CSS gene model.
And there's a second interface, which isn't a bar chart interface. It's a heat map. So, for example, if you're interested in several genes within a region or a whole multi-gene family, you can search for all of the genes at the same time and view their expression as a heat map. Um, so, for example, we were interested in how's this gene, how are these genes expressed in the grain? And we can see that the gene on the far right-hand side um, up here is the most highly expressed in the grain. And one more thing to mention is you have this n equals and then a number, and that indicates um, how many samples have been averaged to produce this value. So it can give you more confidence. Sometimes it might only be two or one, but quite often it's many samples, so it gives you much more confidence in the expression level being correct. And one more thing to mention is, although it may... You can use this to make kind of comparisons between different samples, but if you want to really know is this gene differentially expressed between these two conditions, you need to do a full differential expression analysis. You can't just use these to say this is definitely higher than the other one, even though it might intuitively seem that way. Um, but if you need any more details on that, feel free to come and um, ask me afterwards. So our website's available um, online, and it has lots of information there to help you use it. So we have information about where the studies came from. You can download all the data. You can add your own data, and there's some t tutorials and videos. Um, so if you want to download the data, for example, for doing differential expression analysis, everything in there, those over 400 samples, are just available. You can download it as a CSV file, um, and you can use it for differential expression analysis. You can also add your own data. So we've made a virtual machine, which is basically a software which runs the whole platform in your own local computer. So your data would keep, be kept private to you. It wouldn't get added to the website. Um, and you can download this virtual machine with all the wheat data. So you can just add on your own extra wheat samples um, to have them in the same visualization interface. <clears throat> or you can download it empty so it can be used with any transcript home. So you could use it with Arabidopsis, you could use it with tomato, whatever species you had some RNA-seq data for. You could make the same visualiz visualization interface. And there's a tutorial available um, online for how to do this. Um, so we hope that this has created a user-friendly platform, which is intuitive to use. Um, we think it's got quite a dynamic interface, so it's quite easy to ask different questions, so compare between different tissues or different ages, or if you had a specific disease, or whatever questions you want to ask. And it's flexible, so we're planning to update as more RNA-seq samples become available um, and update to the new gene models, which are now available. And we really welcome feedback, so if anyone has any suggestions for how we can improve this, then feel free to talk to any of the three of us um, during the conference. So if anyone has any questions.